We're now joined by Paul Feinbaum, host of The Paul Feinbaum Show. Paul, what's the latest you're hearing out of Columbus? Kate, I'm hearing a lot of whispers that this will be Urban Meyer's final season in Columbus. And you go back to August with the controversy over Zach Smith. You, you, you talked about Gene Smith, the, the tension between them. You saw it at that press conference. Uh, you, you also know by now, as, as everyone, that a member of the Board of Trustees wanted more severe punishment and ended up resigning. That was before the season started. And of course, Urban missed the first couple of games. And since he's been back, uh, Ohio State had won until Saturday night, coming from behind to beat Penn State, but they have not looked good. Uh, Urban Meyer's demeanor on the sidelines has been curious. He has complained several times of headaches. And having covered Urban Meyer at the University of Florida, Kate, this looks like a rerun. It looks like deja vu. Uh, Urban Meyer walked away down there when the pressure got too much, and I believe he'll do the same thing at the end of the season here. How much of where Ohio State is at right now is a result of the Zach Smith scandal that we talked about and the three-game suspension for Urban Meyer versus whatever problems already existed between Urban Meyer and Ohio State? I think I think you, you have to point to that. Uh, there was such a disconnect on that campus. And, and, and I know and you know very well that fans stood up blindly loyal to Urban Meyer and so did the football players. But you know, even if you're a young person on that team, you had to be disgusted by what you read, by what you heard, the fact that Urban Meyer covered up for someone like Zach Smith. And, and I think there was a trickle down. And it's interesting that the team seemed to be reacting better when Urban Meyer was not part of the team, uh, as opposed to when he came back. And he just looks lost to me on the sideline. Uh, he looks disconnected, disjointed. And we're talking about one of the best coaches in modern college football history. Uh, and it's sad to watch, but in many ways, uh, he probably should have been let go at the time. Uh, why Ohio State sold its soul? To let him come back, I'm, I'm not sure. Well, I, yes, I am sure, because it's all, it's all about winning. It was all about trying to get a national championship that I don't think they're going to get right now. Do you think that disconnection comes from Urban Meyer believing that he shouldn't have even gotten the three-game suspension and being frustrated by that? Uh, absolutely, Kate. Uh, I, that was so easy to read on his face that day. And, and listen, he's tried to clean it up several times with, with statements that he ended up uh, deleting and, and apologizing for again. And, and, and ultimately, a month ago, the sit down with Tom Rinaldi revealed Urban Meyer's character, that he can't deal with the reality of someone telling him what to do. In that interview, uh, he still couldn't deal with, with Courtney Smith. Uh, he, he did not want to acknowledge that, that he had been wrong and she had been abused. Uh, he, he didn't know how to say, I'm sorry. He's got some problems. And, and I think that's manifesting itself now on the football field. And yeah, look, I don't want to be a pop psychiatrist here, but it, but it does seem like, like he is in a bubble and he is disconnected from not only his coaching staff, but from his team. And the results have been pretty bad. Uh, and I say pretty bad, they've lost one game. But this is yeah. now the fourth time in recent years that Urban Meyer has been blown out. Uh, great coaches don't get blown out by 29 or, or 31 points like he did last year against Iowa. All right, Paul Feinbaum, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you.